Yeah, well, everybody feels like it's somebody else's job. Everybody yeah. feels it like work like that. Yeah, and so. everybody feels like well, you just got to get out of that neighborhood. Nah, you know that's that doesn't hear. work. No, that's what else is work. Roxanne Shante talked about reentrification. She said, you know, she she doesn't want to hear people com- keep complaining about gentrification when the kids that are leaving these neighborhoods, whether they sing, dance, rap, or not, or just go get good jobs and go be decent human beings. You should be re-entering your neighborhoods. You should be buying houses or pieces of land there. One of the most impressive things, one of my favorite players is John Stockton. And I don't know if it's true or not, but I read a story that he actually bought a house right on the street he grew up in. So in the offseason, he'd go back essentially home with his kids. So they'd had some type of normalization to their life. You, we should be doing that. You know, um, T.I. and I have bought properties together in the same neighborhoods we grew up in. We're developing things like restaurants and stuff. I'd like to see more athletes and rappers become the merchant and business class in that way. And I'd like to see people who grew up in neighborhoods move back to those neighborhoods they grew up in, like like the typical iconic American dream. You know, you can build a, you know, another 8,000 square foot in the back of your A-frame house if you want to, but you shouldn't be going to 50, 60 minutes outside the city and then complaining about the blight of the city because you took yourself away. You took the talent and the resources away. Do you think that everyone should feel that way, though? Or is it, I mean, do you feel like you have to be committed to the city that you grew up in? Or couldn't you want to just get the fuck out of there and go somewhere different? There's nothing wrong with getting the fuck out. But you, you gotta, just think like, you should go back and support it. Yeah, it's like I tell kids, you know, in college, and they say, Mike, you know, what can we do? You know, kids in college, kids, when you go speak at college, they say, well, what can we do? Kids want to inspect the world. Very easy. <laughs> Find a kid in high school, tutor that kid, make sure they replace you at this university or another. That's it. You're just you're just replanting the seed. Mm. If you grow food, you know, you don't grow the same land year after year after year. Some you have to give that land a break, retill it. You know what I'm saying? And it's kind of like the neighborhood. So you don't have to stay in the same neighborhood your whole life. You don't have to feel like I never went anything or escaped anywhere. But you do have to. Don't sell your mother's house. Mm. You know, rent it to your cousin. You know, <laughs> let your younger sister. Stay, but don't don't sell your mother. That piece of land was worked for. The blood, the toil, the soil. It means something, and it should. And, and for working class people especially, it keeps your neighborhood and communities more like the ones that made you be a good human being. You know, mm. So I think that there's something. Most people don't leave the town they grew up in. They move to the other side or they move to the suburbs. Most people, are, most people marry somebody they knew. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. My thing is make the best of it. Don't let it keep becoming the worst. A man named Mr. John, my wife and I own barbershops. So people don't know. We own... These things called the shade washing room shops. We have one in State Farm Arena that where the Atlanta Hawks play. We have our flagship store on Edgewood Avenue. Edgewood Avenue was once, and Auburn Avenue were once the centers of black Atlanta in terms of commerce and retail and money. Atlanta Life Insurance Company was there. You guys Google some of this stuff. This is big time shit. You know, this isn't the old narrative of we've never had nothing because that's not the truth. Atlanta was a very rich city for African Americans. Still is. On this street, used to be owned by African Americans, the storefronts in there. Their children, after these people died off, sold the buildings off and sold them for cheap. And I know this because a man named Mr. John, who runs a grocery store there, stopped me one day. He said, you know, Michael, (coughs) after we're gone and this neighborhood's been gentrified and everything's different, they're going to come along and say that white people stole this from us. And he said, that's not true. He say the children of the people that were here left and they never came back because they didn't think what their parents built was good enough. Oh, man, it killed me because that is not just black people. That's Americans, period. We have gotten to a point where we are unappreciative. We are entitled and we don't think what happened before us was good enough. So we don't treasure it. We don't honor it. We don't reinvest in it. That could be a farm in Milledgeville. That could be a house in Adamsville. But we have to do a better job of appreciating ourselves, appreciating our community, and then appreciating our greater community. And you have to re-enter. You have to re-entrify that. You have to be a part of whatever gentrification happens to make sure that your stake is still there and that what you care about from a morals and civil perspective is represented there. My uncle, um, my uncle John Blackman, who was a huge influence on me, died and had a five-car garage where where he, he did transmissions and stuff, and I begged my aunt to sell it, please. I don't want you. I know they're going to come. The belt line's coming. All this cool, but please sell it to me. I didn't want my uncle's building, you know, for to go to strangers and become, you know, an apartment complex or something. And I walked in your building. And I seen your building, and I said, "Wow, I know what I'm going to do with it now. 
I've had it for like three years now. I just, I just had it. But I didn't, never knew what I wanted to do. But you were like, yo, you need somewhere to go every day. Your building is impressive. I'm like, yo, I'm just going to just make my, my uncle's building my offices, right? And I'll figure out a way to make a lot of money off of it. I mean, I've already made a lot of money, which enabled me to buy it. But it's important to me that as this neighborhood turns into hipster land, because it's definitely going to be, it's just going to be black hipster. It's going to be like chocolate hipster land. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that there's still some chocolate working class in there. And sometimes they're going to go buy coffee and there's going to be a loud ass muscle car and lots of marijuana smoke blowing out of it so they'll know that, you know, my uncle's nephew's still in the town. 